behind me here we have the all new 2020 Lincoln Aviator. It is a Lincoln Motor Company's mid-size luxury SUV. It's been 14 years since they made one but they are finally back and they are back with a bang. Last year's success of the new Navigator has transferred over to the new Aviator. Now there's so much to go over in today's review because it is truly amazing and uh, first thing I gotta say is that I am happy that Lincoln stayed very very close to the design of the prototype that we saw just a few years ago. Many times a manufacturer will uh, severely deviate from uh, the very cool design they'll initially show when they're talking about their new model coming out. But the Aviator pretty much looks like it did in the concept pictures. And before we continue, I wanna give a special thanks to South Hills Lincoln of Pittsburgh for providing the Aviator in today's review. This vehicle is currently for sale. I'll leave all their contact information in the description below. Now the Lincoln Aviator comes available in four different trims. It's the Aviator, the Reserve, the Black Label, and also the up and coming Grand Touring. What we have here today though is indeed a black label and we'll start up front here of our little walk around now every lincoln aviator has a specific grill depending on what trim it is now this is as we said the black label now we have all new adaptive pixel led headlamps and they look absolutely fantastic we have led fog lights if you even call them that anymore <laughs> So let's talk about the power plant, shall we? Well, the Aviator comes in a three liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost engine producing 400 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. A lot of plastic coverage here in the whole engine bay. You see the wind chill washer fluid pop up there, no mistaking. But when the Grand Touring model comes out, this three liter V6 will be paired with hybrid technology, which will produce 450 horsepower and 600 pound-feet of torque. Now for 2020, you get either all-wheel drive, but if you want two-wheel drive, it's actually rear-wheel drive instead of front-wheel drive. I like that a lot. That's also new for the Ford Explorer, which is the cousin of the Aviator, although they are completely differentiated. I've been in both of them and you can't even tell that this Aviator comes from the same family. Now prices start at around mid 50s for the regular Aviator and for a fully loaded black label that price jumps up about 30,000 to around $85,000. Now we got the typical uh, Lincoln key fob. I feel like they could have updated that as well for the Aviator but nonetheless, it serves the same purpose, of course. Now we got third row seating here. We'll talk more about that as soon as we get into the vehicle here, but the Aviator has best in class cargo space behind the third row. Now you can, of course, fold them down. And you have even more room. I just have some backpacks and camera equipment back here. I just think the rear end of this SUV is so good looking. I mean, Lincoln's design language nowadays is just phenomenal. The new Navigator looks fantastic, although its rear end, in my opinion, wasn't maybe the best attribute, but uh, for the Aviator, I think it's quite the opposite. This looks fantastic. We have full LED lighting all around the tailgate, of course. And one thing I wanna mention here is that we got dual quad tip exhaust pipes here, as you guys can see, but you can see the actual exhaust goes out underneath here. And they do that to not get these chrome exhaust tips looking dirty like most cars get. I think that is a uh, fantastic feature. Let those exhaust fumes go down instead of out of here. Now, if we talk a bit more regarding the design of the Aviator, you can see the uh, wraparound front windshield and also the kind of slanted roof line is all part of the aviation themed design. It's elegant, it's different, and you can just tell that Lincoln put thought into the way the Aviator was going to look. Now, the color on our tester here today is burgundy velvet metallic. And as we move along to the side of the Aviator here, you can see the 22 inch 
black label wheels that are wrapped in 275 40 diameter tires. Now also new for 2020 and part of the dynamic handling package is air glide suspension which will replace traditional hard coil springs with air bladders that can be inflated to the precise amount of pressure required. Now Lincoln claims it's like riding on a cloud. Now unfortunately in today's video I can't demonstrate this because our tester does not come equipped with the dynamic handling package but when you have the air glide suspension and you have the key in your pocket and you walk up to the vehicle and it senses that you're close what the air glide suspension will do is actually squat down to assist you in entering the vehicle. Also if you're doing this at night the LED tail lamps, the headlights up front, and also the Lincoln star up front in the grill will illuminate, sort of like it's greeting you for coming back to your vehicle. But the air glide suspension and the squatting, kind of like it's kneeling to you to just assist you in getting into the vehicle better, that is an absolutely awesome feature. And I wish I could show it to you in today's video, but hopefully we can do that later on when the Grand Touring model comes out. So let's transition to the inside of the aviator shall we but uh, we're not going to start with the driver's seat we'll start with the passenger seat and also I'm gonna, going to mention you don't have to use your key anymore when you own a Lincoln aviator you can have the vehicle synced up to your Lincoln app on your phone and that will work the same way and uh, once you get up here you don't have traditional door handles it's a button on the inside of the door handle that you just push and in we go so we have cashmere leather all through the interior and this is also the chalet black label theme which gives you the light interior it looks absolutely phenomenal this is gorgeous now if you have a bunch of uh, kids uh, young kids that is is this going to stay clean the whole time I don't know about all that, but uh, for now, it, <laughs> it looks fantastic. So let's jump in here. This is my driving position. I'm six foot two, and my knees are actually not hitting the back of the driver's seat here. So that's definitely an A+. Now, we're also going to jump into the third row seat, of course. And you can either do that by jumping over this little cup holder in the middle here, or fold down the headrest, push this button right here, and it moves forward. So yeah, I mean, obviously a little tighter here, but actually very impressive headroom, even in the third row for a uh, fully grown adult like myself. Now, one thing we're gonna mention before we jump into the driver's seat here is that the aviator comes with four different climate zones. So the driver, the passenger, the second row, and also the third row. So no matter where you're sitting in this SUV, you can have your desired temperature. You don't have to be dependent on what this person says or that person says or that person says. In the second row, you have USB ports here, full power plug here. We'll start the car up as well so you can see the infotainment screen. So here we have the controls for the second row and also the third row. You got your climate, you got your audio controls here. It's just so pleasant in the Lincoln Aviator. Now the headliner, this is suede for Alcantara. Got a gorgeous moonroof. This brings in a lot of light to the cabin, especially with this chalet interior. It just looks so good. And uh, you open the door by pushing this button right here. So no traditional door handle anywhere in the car. But now, let's jump in the driver's seat. And uh, you know, most cars, they'll have uh, annoying beeps and chimes when you get in. Let's say you walk out and you for, forget to bring your key or whatever it is, not the Lincoln Aviator. That's right, Lincoln hired the Detroit Symphony Orchestra to produce their chimes in the vehicle. Let me demonstrate that one more time. And just as a comparison, this is what I'm used to at home. Now, if you're entering the vehicle without it being started like we just did. Look at that greeting. 
how could I forget to mention this before we jump in? The Aviator, of course, comes with a 30-way perfect positioned seats. Now, I've been in these seats before in the Navigator and also the Continental, and they are by far the most comfortable, That I mean, the plain and simple best seats I've ever sat in. They also look great. We have the seat controls here on uh, the side of the door, kind of like a Mercedes, and check this out. These two buttons here, you control your lower leg support, and then if we hold it in and move it like this, check that out. We have the headrest. <laughs> it's just amazing. 30-way adjustable seats, and uh, yeah, I challenge anyone to find more comfortable seats than uh, we find in the Lincolns. But now, back to the steering wheel. This is a new design for the Aviator, ergonomically designed. I probably mispronounced that being Swedish and all. But uh, it, yeah, it, it's pretty amazing. We have the voice activation button right here. Please say a command. And you have all your controls for the gorgeous instrument cluster right here. This is, well, this is for the volume actually. <laughs> And we gotta talk about this as well. This is the 28 speaker Revel Ultima 3D sound system. But as you can see here, there's a lot of gloss panel black here and it's not really showing anything right here. But if you push this button right here, we have our cruise control settings. Then if you push this button right here, our trip meter pops up on the instrument cluster. Now the Aviator comes with a 10 speed automatic transmission. You have paddle shifters here as well. But take a look at this cockpit here. It's just elegance. So beautiful. Now if we go over here, this is definitely kind of different. This is your park, your reverse, neutral, and drive. And this is a piano key design. Just push down for reverse. And by the way, I might have found uh, the clearest backup camera I've ever seen, or 360 camera that is. Before it was the Mercedes 360 cameras, but th this looks like 4K. It's just absolutely amazing. Then we're jumping over here. This is for the headlights, and it's just kind of like a, a touch button dial here. Everything is just very nice to the touch. And like I said earlier, if you know anything about Fords, you're used to Fords, just take a look at this interior. Nothing looks like a Ford in here. Lincoln does a fantastic job to differentiate themselves from their cheaper cousin. Now we got vanity lights for the driver and the passenger. The start stop button is located up here. That is a, I don't know, kind of a, a weird position. Maybe it should be, I don't know. Lincoln probably knows what they're doing, but it's just Maybe it just takes time to get used to, but uh, it's located up there. Anyhow, <laughs> it's just a bit of a reach to get there. Now the speakers obviously integrated in the doors here and uh, down there as well. And all around the seats all over the place and it's 28 of them. And one thing with doing reviews of cars and putting them on YouTube is that you can't really ever display the sound system because one, it never comes out and does any kind of justice. Two, if you play, let's say here, play REM. If I do it for more than a few seconds, we get demonetized and YouTube doesn't even wanna really push this video. But all I can say is if, if you're in the market for an aviator you got to go and and check out this sound system and this is an option by the way so trust me it's worth it get it it is absolutely phenomenal so while we're staring at the screen here we might as well quickly go over it it is the sync 3 infotainment system it's been around for a while I've done tons of videos on this it's just very easy to navigate and the screens in the Lincoln's also look completely different from the screens in the Ford's it is a phenomenal infotainment system and if we go down here we have our volume buttons you can control the climate for the rear up front of course all your climate buttons down here cooled seats heated seats and here we have our drive modes and check this out so we're currently in normal mode switching to conserve and it tells you exactly what it does it's for efficient driving and then we have excite that's for responsive and engaging that basically improves your throttle response uh, the transmission will stay in gear for a longer period of time go over here to uh, slippery slick icy and loose surfaces 
I love how it just gives like a plain and simple explanation to what it's doing. Deep conditions, deep snow, mud and sand. That'll also turn off the traction control. And this was of course introduced for the navigator, but look at that little laser looking needle for the tachometer. It just, it looks great. Very classy and elegant design for the Lincolns. I mean, if you're looking for an SUV in this class that has a sporty look, the Lincolns probably are not the way to go. You might look at maybe like a Range Rover or an AMG, you know, GLE SUV or something like that. You don't get the sporty feel when it's Lincoln, but that's not really you know what they're trying to do either it's definitely the elegance feel and that type of clientele that they're marketing to I mean again just look at what you see from the driver's position it's just it's gorgeous so let's just go over some of the cubbies here before we take it out on the road we have one right behind the actual center stack here and then in the middle we have a pretty decent sized cubby there as well normal size glove department box soft leather all through here now this kind of looks like hard plastic but it is soft as well as well as in the door very cushiony in the middle here we have the camera button for the 360 camera that is we can turn off the annoying auto start stop right there and with that i think we're ready to take it out on the road yeah the three liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost V6 is definitely quick, not that it's, you know, supposed to be some kind of performance SUV, but uh, yeah, if, if you need it, it's there. Now the Aviator comes with acoustic laminated front windshield and side windows, and I deliberately do not have a external mic hooked up to this GoPro camera here just to see what the audio is actually going to be like because the acoustic laminated windshields are supposed to deal with outside road noise a whole lot better than a regular windshield. But right off the bat, I mean, this ride is just what it's supposed to be. It is quiet, it's comfortable, you feel like you're just floating around and like we already mentioned, our tester here today doesn't have the new air suspension either, but it's still very good. I, I can't even imagine what it would be with the improved suspension system of the Aviator. Now we have great visibility all around from the driver's position, two big side mirrors with blind spot information system, of course. All Aviators come with Lincoln's Copilot 360. You can also get the Lincoln 360 Plus. Part of that package is adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist. I know it's a lot of fancy words here now. Now for those of you who are not familiar with adaptive cruise control and what the regular adaptive cruise control does, it's a system where you set your speed and then you also set the distance to the vehicle in front of you. Now if the vehicle in front of you hits the brakes and lowers its speed, your vehicle will automatically lower its speed as well. Now the traffic jam assist works through a system that scans for, let's say, traffic jams or accidents that are happening ahead of you. So what it'll do is adjust your speed accordingly to the traffic that is ahead of you before you even know what's going on ahead of you. Now it also has a speed limit sign detector. So if you're driving down a road where the speed limit is 65 miles an hour and then you hit an area where it's 55 miles an hour, it will automatically decrease your speed. You basically have to think less when you're driving the Lincoln Aviator. This stereo, man, it is so good. It's just such a harmonious feeling to drive the Lincoln Aviator. Now, I mean, with many of my Lincoln reviews, I love this brand. People think I'm getting paid to say this. Now, granted, yes, I earn money from my YouTube videos, from ad revenue, but I don't get paid from the brand or anything. But Lincoln has just taken such a step up. And to me, it started with the new Continental and then the new Navigator and now finally the Aviator. I mean, it's just next level. I think that the Aviator currently, because it's the latest mid-size luxury SUV on the market, is the best mid-size luxury SUV that you can currently buy. The main competitors are the Acura MDX, the Volvo XC90, the Cadillac XT6, 
to name a few. But for those of you that are in the market and you're out shopping, I pretty much guarantee you when you step into the Aviator, it, it's just a different feel. Lincoln truly knows what they're doing in the luxury segment. It is just phenomenal. Now one thing about the driving experience that might not really equate to luxury per se is the head-up display. It is also fantastic. The resolution is just amazing and the information that it gives you is just what you need. We have our time, we have the temperature, the speed, our cruise control, what the speed limit is on the road that you're driving and also how many miles you have to empty tank. Now fuel economy, Lincoln states it's 20 on average, that's 17 in the city and 24 on the highway. That will most likely go up when the Grand Touring model comes out with the uh, hybrid drivetrain. I don't know those exact numbers at the time. I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to check out the Grand Touring Aviator once it comes out. But with that being said, I'm sure there's a whole lot more that can be said, but a vehicle like this needs to be experienced. I can sit and talk and talk and talk and leave my opinions all day long. But uh, again, if you're in the market, you have to go out, you have to experience the Aviator for yourself. Go out and test drive it, and I guarantee you that you will not be disappointed. This thing is absolutely amazing. So uh, I wanna give, again, a special thanks to South Hills Lincoln for providing the vehicle in today's review and for letting me uh, review one of the first aviators in the Pittsburgh area. Definitely check them out if you're in the market. Again, I'll leave all their contact information in the description below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the 2020 Lincoln Aviator. Let me know what your favorite part of this new luxury SUV from Lincoln is. And if you're stopping by for the first time and you haven't already and you want to, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.